So I'm sure we've all seen a time lapse before, and I really, really like this format because it's very cool to see an artist work from start to finish in a very fast way. However, most time lapses fall short in that they don't explain much, and typically, at least I've come to an understanding that they're kind of lazy content for artists. So this time lapse is going to be focusing on more the process of creating this piece, this 14 hour piece that I, I did. And with that, let's get started. As with any good painting, I believe you should start with a sketch. So what I'm doing here is just drawing over my initial thumbnail that I did on paper. It was very small and I'm now blowing it up to about 3000 pixels wide. Then I open up Blender, create a 3D reference for the scene. It'll help with um, rendering out lighting, making sure the perspective is on point. Now that I've created a 3D sketch, I import it into Clip Studio Paint and I just start sketching over it. Now we're moving on to the value pass, and what I'm doing here is just using two tones, a 25% gray and a 75% gray. So one's for dark, one's for lights. And I'm just working with those two tones right now, trying to nail down the essential values. Once the value pass is done, I use a combination of overlay, soft light, multiply layers, and color layers to color the scene. Now here comes the part you all hate, and I know many of you don't do, which is merging all of my current layers, which are only about 10, into a single layer. I know this seems daunting, but it's really not, and you should just do it. Moving forward, this whole painting will be painted on a single layer while the rendering process is happening. So I'm going to show you a quick example of what this rendering process looks like in real time. I'm using a very simple round brush that I created along with a blur smudge tool. And now I'm just very carefully taking my time going through a process called rendering. In 3D, this looks like the computer generating the image based on all the settings. In painting, this is just taking your value and color pass and taking it to its final completion form. This takes hours and hours of work. That's why this painting took 14 hours because it is painstaking. You will get bored. The rendering process is a great time to turn your brain off, listen to a podcast, be patient. It'll go through many ugly stages. You have to overcome those, those hurdles. And once you're on the other side, you're gonna be really proud of it. So during all my paintings, I get very bored looking at one thing. So you'll see me hop around the painting from time to time when I'm working on the environment or I'm thinking of bounce lights or I'm, I just want to clean something up. But a good rule of thumb for me that I found, the quicker I can render out the main characters and the subjects, particularly their faces, the more invested I'll become. And you want to see this character, whatever they look like, solidified in this world. You'll see here I made a huge compositional change. I made the characters a lot bigger and I just kind of selected them with the lasso tool and expanded them, transformed them, made them larger. And so now I have to clean up all the mistakes that I made by doing that. And that's part of the process and also kind of the fun of painting on a single layer. It's a very destructive process, but it's also, it's a limitation that will create out of you a better artist. we're ultimately just painting light. So studying how to render with certain brushes or how to color pick better or opacity and flow settings, virtually meaningless if you don't understand how light affects objects and what sort of materials you want to have going on in your scene.
as I'm going through this, I'm referencing the original Marble Garden Zone sprites because I want to stay somewhat faithful and accurate. And as such, I jump back into Blender and start carving out this small little block uh, to create some sort of chip away at this cylinder I have going on on the right. It didn't take a whole lot of time to create and the end result was a very helpful reference. So these hands were kind of bothering me the whole time. My initial drawing for them I knew was wrong, but I don't know why. So I simply just took a quick photo. You can see that photo here on the screen. And I decided to use that as a reference for Tails and Sonic's hands. Honestly, the lighting in this, this painting was particularly difficult because it's a wide angle lens shot, which means the lighting, it's not clear exactly where it's coming from in one direction. It's actually going to be affecting multiple sides because it's a wide angle shot, so it's almost like a panorama shot. So you'll see that the lighting affects two different sides of the painting. It's coming from both the left and the right, and that's because it's a wide angle shot. So realistically, the lighting is like almost straight above, uh, pointing downwards at maybe like a 35 degree angle. And when I paint, I'm I'm painting with shape in mind. I don't want to paint every blade of grass. I want to I want to just sell the idea that there's a lot of blades of grass there. Eggman's ship was definitely one of the trickier parts of the entire drawing process because there's just not a whole lot of reference for it. There's only a 2D reference of his sprite for the whole ship. So I had to create and have fun with what was going on underneath and the mechanics of it. I also didn't want to spend too much time on Robotnik's ship since I knew it was going to be sort of out of perspective. It should read a little bit more blurry without simply throwing a filter over it. All right, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit, quite literally. Six and a half hours later. So I'm nearing the end of my rendering process. I'm probably about eight to 10 hours in painting at this point. I had this idea to create a some noise and then really crunch it so be, they became really hard shapes. I merge it down into a single layer and I start painting on top of it for this kind of crumbly look and I think it, I think it looked a lot better. It was also a lot closer to how the sprites look. They were very rough rocks. Now as I head into the final stage of painting, I start focusing and thinking about all the superfluous fancy stuff like uh, some effects, like I see like there's like this wind gust that's coming up from their feet that I just created with a soft brush and just kind of blurred out a bit and then reduced the opacity. I created some blades of grass that were popping up and used a slight uh, radial blur on them. And then I created multiple layers to blur at different levels depending on how far away they were. And so now at this point, it's just a lot of gloss and, and kind of frills. Honestly, it's a lot more relaxing than anything because it's, you're making, you're pushing the painting to, to its final render and you get to have a lot of fun with effects. 
So I'm just messing around with a ton of different blurs and effects and this is all happening on different layers at this point. Now my, my single layer rule has been abandoned to push the painting as far as I can to its final um, resting place. I created a noise texture in a separate program in Affinity Photo and now I'm just painting that noise te texture in kind of some darker areas all over the rocks to make it look a little bit more gritty. And then I really wanted to paint a lens flare, which are always fun to have um, because it gives your piece this kind of extra amount of realism like this was taken with a real camera. So this lens flare, it took me a while to figure out, but as soon as it's done, that'll be the end of the piece. And with that, that's gonna be the end of this painting process. It will also conclude a lot of my sonic work going forward. This channel will be going through a bit of a transition. If you like my art in general or you find the things I have to say helpful, stick around. If you're here solely for the sonic content, you may be disappointed by what I produce in 2021, but what I look forward to producing is more videos dedicated to Clip Studio Paint and animation in general, rather than sonic related content and how to draw that. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys have a great day. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, all that stuff, Diwali, and Happy New Year. See you in the next video.